everybody. My name is Anthony. And I'm Penelope. And you're listening to The Art of Entertainment, a podcast where we talk about music, books, television, and pretty much anything else we feel like talking about. So today is our second spooky episode spooky season. <laughs> of the podcast, and today we're going to be discussing Kim Petrus' album, Turn Off the Light. So Turn Off the Light is a Halloween-themed album. Um, it was actually released in two separate volumes. The first volume was released last October 1st of last year, um, and then the second volume was released this October 1st. Um, so basically, it's just a fun little spooky pop album, and let's get right into it. Um, so the album opens with Purgatory, which is an instrumental track. To me, this was a good opener. Um, it starts out kind of sounding like the beginning of a battle or something like that, and then it transitions into a light, bouncy, kind of synthy beat. Um, and then it's groovy. Um, even though it's repetitive, I still like it, and I think it's a good opener to the album. Yeah. I think it, because, like you said, it is a good opener, because I think already you're getting kind of the feel of how the rest of the instrumentals and the melodies are going to go into it. Yeah. Like, my notes for it, I said... It sounds like the beginning to an old horror movie, Mm -hmm. and then it just goes straight into being, like, club music. Yeah. (laughs) Which is what it's, like, which the album has been described as. Yeah, and it's one of several instrumental tracks on the album, which is kind of unique, because you don't really hear albums having instrumental tracks anymore. You don't get that too often. And I think that kind of sets the tone, because this album, I would say, is largely focused more on its production and its melodies rather than the lyrics than lyrics which yeah that was a definite thing that i noticed yeah mm-hmm. um and since it's instrumental not much else to say about this track so Honestly, let's yeah. <laughs> let's move on to track number two which is there will be blood and it had a really smooth transition from purgatory so i liked that mm-hmm. what were your thoughts on this song i do th- yeah because i listened to it um like in not in order it was on shuffle Mm -hmm. but even just going through the songs like I think I listened to the first three like without even realizing that it had changed songs because I was like wow this is like really it is really like super cohesive yeah in terms of production yeah um there will be blood um I don't think I really have much to say about it I mean it was a it was a good song like, I really like the, um, the, I, I forgot how it went. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, here, you talk about it, okay. and I'm just gonna... Yeah, um, so I kind of agree this song was good, but it wasn't, like, great. It didn't really stand out much to me. Um, it had this really thumping, like, synth beat, which is pretty common for the rest of the album. Um, and then it also... Um, it has a very yelly chorus, like she's like, there will be blood, <laughs> um, which is kind of catchy, but it's still not one of the best on the album because it doesn't really go anywhere or do anything unique. Um, and then the whole song is just um, a metaphor for sex, which is like the yeah, whole that's album. Yeah, like a main thing. <laughs> yeah, on. that's pretty much the whole album. Um, but altogether, not my favorite. The pre-chorus, I will say, is the best part to me. Because the melody is very unique and futuristic. Okay, I'm back. I listened (laughs) listened to it. Uh, I do... Yeah, I think the reason why I couldn't really remember how it went is because I feel like I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. It is very club sounding. Like... Yeah. So there's not much. Lyrically... Lyrically, not much either. (laughs) It's... It's a metaphor that kind of repeats itself throughout the album. That's not yeah. necessarily a bad thing, because it's, like, it doesn't really bother me. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, Halloween, scary, yeah, love, dangerous. I think that's one of the... I think I read... I was looking for at the <laughs> on the wiki for this album, and one of the critic reviews, was it was given a 1.5 out of 5, mm-hmm. because I think it said that uh, it's overly repetitive, yeah. and... Um, one of the critiques was, like, focused so much on the production that it didn't really do anything with the lyrics, yeah. and it was so overly repetitive with them, and even the lyrics that there mm-hmm. were in songs, it wasn't highbrow either. That's mm-hmm. the thing. I don't think it's supposed to be. Yeah, I don't think it's meant to be some, like, complex yeah. lyrical thing. I think it's good for what it was, which is just, like, a fun Halloween album. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, let's move on to track number three, which is another mostly instrumental track. 
um, Bloody Valentine. So great. this was my least favorite on the album. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's like a cheat kind of thing because it's one of the instrumentals. Mm. <laughs> um, but basically the reason why this was my least favorite is because the whole, um, the only thing that's really said in this song is My Bloody Valentine. But it's just repeated over and over to the point where it gets on my nerves. Like, I don't find it. Like, there's a difference between being repetitive in a good way and the repetitive to where it gets on your nerves. And this yeah. was definitely the latter. Um, it has another very club-ready beat, but it doesn't really go anywhere either. Um, however, there is one thing I do like about this song, which is the way it ends. Um, because it ends with the sound of, like, opening a car door and then bugs, like, scattering around. Um, and then it kind of works with the storyline of the album because it's like arriving at a haunted house kind of thing. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that, I like, another reason why I like this album is because I get very distinct imagery from it. Me too. Like for a lot of my notes, it's like, oh my god, I got a specific vibe from this and I can like picture like in a movie. Yeah. I did, um, it almost, I don't know how else to describe it. Like I don't want to go <laughs> to show you what I mean. So I'm just going to play it. Oh, wait. Okay, here we... Oh, my God. <laughs> here we go. Okay, wait, that's not it. Anyway, I like that. Oh, I know why. It reminds me of this other song that I also really like. So I think that's why. Uh, there's this, oh, what is it called? It's called School Life by Stray Kids. I've I'll, never I'll heard of anything in that sentence. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, like, it's a K-pop group, but I'll show you. Because the instrumental, okay. there's this one part of the song where it does that same, like, da -da, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. So I'll show you when it's a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um... Not much else to say about this one either. Yeah, not really. <laughs> so, song number four is Wrong Turn. What were your thoughts on this one? Ah. <clears throat> um, uh. <laughs> I, I, think, I think this was one of my favorites. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. Um, one of, that's the <laughs> thing, too. Is, yeah, the lyrics aren't highbrow, whatever, but I, I did like how she... Um, intertwined it with the uh, production and mm -hmm. the you know there's just some things like when lyrics like when they just fit so yeah. well and I think she, she's really good about this with the production and how she um matched everything together but I do like the meet the wrong one on the wrong night I don't know why like that that just sticks it's very out satisfying. to me yeah um the bridge yeah that was good that was really good. That's the part where it like slows down kind of, mm -hmm. right? I love that part so much yes. because it's like, it goes very electronic and then it just fades out with like this yeah. beat kind of, or this and melody. The, like the bass in the background at the very so end. I love it so much. I listen to it. <laughs> it's, it's very haunting and yeah. hypnotic kind of, which is a comment I had for this whole song. It's very hypnotic sounding. Mm. Like, especially the chorus, it's like kind of repetitive, but like, I don't know. It has very haunty, spooky vibes. Mm -hmm. um, and then, again, a very synthy beat, which is common with this album. Um, and it's very catchy as well. Um, I like this song as well because it's a continuation from Bloody Valentine, where, like, you had at the end of last song where she's, like, getting out of the car. This oh. is where, like, the car kind of speeds off and then it, like, crashes at the beginning of the song. At least that's what I got from it. Oh. And I love that because it brought such a specific vibe. Like, here, wait. Now I'm, I'm sad that I listened to it on shuffle. <laughs> I know. Oh, like, this is I'm an album to, you really have yeah, to listen, listen to start to and finish. Again. But I want to show you what the beginning sounded like because it has such a specific imagery that I love. And then that's how it starts. You know what that reminds me of? What? <clears throat> Do you know you know the movie Carrie? Yeah. Uh, you know that one scene where it's right after the prom? and then I've never seen it. 
Oh, <laughs> but I know. Okay, it. <laughs> well, that reminds me. I that's the thing that I love about this is I think she's making references to me. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm looking too much into it. I wouldn't say that's but, too far. Um, in Carrie, at the you know what happens to her right at the prom. She like like she has pig blood bloody. dropped on her and yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then she kills everybody <laughs> with her telekinesis powers, and then at the very end, like the guy that pretended to like her just to prank her, and then the girl that like hated her and bullied her they were driving off in the car together and so then carrie just comes out of nowhere and like steps in front of the car and they're like oh my god that's exactly what i and get then from they this. crash yeah i don't know I, I can't remember if she like flipped the car or if she was just there and then they saw her and then they like i mean i definitely get that from this song but yeah yeah like i like it because it feels like it amplifies the message of this song which is it's kind of the message throughout the whole album again, but this one is about, like, where the man that she's talking about from the previous few songs, he, like, finally arrives or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and now she's warning him that she's dangerous, but it'll be an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, let's move on to track five, yeah. which is Demons, which is another mostly instrumental song. What were your thoughts on this one? I need to listen to it again because I think it was one of those ones where I was like, wow, this song is really long. <laughs> and, then it's, <laughs> and then I was three songs in. Okay, wait. Give me one second. Yeah, so while Penelope's listening to it, um, I'll say my thoughts, um, which were I really do like this one because it begins with a lot of different voices at the beginning talking about like demons. And then suddenly it just transitions into this really slick beat drop. Um, so the song overall is less than two minutes long, but it's one of the instrumentals that holds your attention, which is very important in my opinion, if you have an instrumental song, because if it doesn't hold your attention, it just feels like filler. Yeah. Okay, wow, what a funky little... <laughs> Definite club vibes. I do like, it gives me like the feeling like at the very beginning of a movie, when you're about to meet like the main mm -hmm. villain or like you know the main monster and mm -hmm. then it cuts to like a, a news report mm -hmm. and you see all these people type oh my god i saw it whenever i'm in the city it kind of reminds me of like the batman yeah like, to me it i don't know if this is out of left base but as you were talking about movie references mm -hmm. um this kind of reminds me of i've never even seen the full movie but poltergeist um which is where like the house is like haunted like and this whole family that lives in it oh and it reminds me of that because the voices at the beginning of the song sound like a family after we get past the, the intro the... <laughs> yeah to Ooh. me that like Especially at the beginning where she's, like, in a house possessed. That gave me poltergeist vibes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't even think about that until now. But I like it. Yeah. Anything else to add about this song? Mm -hmm. Not much because it's an instrumental. So let's move on to six, <laughs> which is Massacre. Okay. Sounded <laughs> like there was an intro to a movie. But there's a ghoulish voice narrated. Almost like Thriller yeah. by Michael Jackson. Like, it also sounded like the beginning of the song Monster Mash. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. just hearing the voice talk about, like, all the, you know, monsters coming out of the graveyard, whatever. Um, I think my favorite part is, like, the instrumental mm -hmm. rather than really anything else. Massacre was, it's not one of my top favorites because it's very different from the rest of the album. It's, I think, the slowest one on the album. Um... So it's definitely got the most haunty, creepy vibes. Mm -hmm. um, and it starts out with her, um, Kim Petras has this little signature tagline that she does on some of her songs, which is the woo thing. Oh. Um, but on this one, she kind of mixes it up because she, she does it in a creepy way. She's like, woo ah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> was, like a little bit of like. It's very, like, I liked it. Mm -hmm. um, so in traditional form to the rest of the album, the chorus on this one is pretty repetitive. Um, but it's more haunting than the rest, which I appreciated. And then I also really like the post-chorus. Um, so interestingly, the verses on this one interpolate Carol of the Bells. Did you <gasps> notice that? Did you notice that? How did you not notice that? What? <laughs> Just wait till you get the verses. You'll hear it. 
but it does it in a very Halloween style, which I think made it even creepier. Um, so it's very mood setting, very ambient, and the high vocals at the end are great. Oh, you're you're almost there. I hear you. Okay. I'm I'm <laughs> scared. Okay, let's listen to this together. Do you hear it? Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Nightmare Before Christmas? <laughs> oh my god. Whoa. It's, I like it. I like how she yeah. did that. Are you oh, shook right now? <laughs> I really like that. You know what? Top five. <laughs> Top five. It's, I I feel like this is definitely a song to where if you're in the right mood for it, it's amazing. Because Carol of the Bells mm -hmm. is my favorite like Christmas song. And then now this is my favorite Halloween song. <laughs> Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, I, and it's just another instance of how the production and the melodies really are the key focus of this mm -hmm. album rather than the lyrics. Because the lyrics are nothing new, honestly, on this one. It's nothing new to any of the themes that have been talked about for the last five songs. Mm -hmm. um, and then also another thing I liked about this song was that it ends with the knife slicing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it transitions into the next song very yeah. well, which is appropriately titled Knives. And it's an oh, instrumental. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, what were your thoughts on knives? I, I had, I, I liked, um, the melody and everything, but just the knife sounding like the sh mm -hmm. it made me cringe. So yeah. I didn't really listen to it for very long. It's not for everyone. However, it didn't really bother me. So I, I really liked how she used the knives to make the beat. Yeah. But that's the thing too, is I feel like even if I, I don't. I don't like the way that it makes me feel just because it like makes chills run down my mm -hmm. but that's that's the point that might be too. The point, that's yeah. the point. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. And then it it's very futuristic and then it has another hard beat drop, yeah. which is super cool. Altogether it's one of my favorite instrumentals on the album. Mm -hmm. With that, let's move on to Death by Sex. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what makes thoughts on this one? No, you should go for yourself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Yeah, it was really good. Um, no, when I was listening to this album, the the whole thing has a very synthy pop club kind of vibe to it, mm -hmm. and then just in the middle, it's this track, which is just like this trap beat, which just like it's very modern sounding, but also it has that Halloween sound to it, um, and it kind of moves forward the storyline of the album because now she's actually with the man and yeah. they're having the relationship. Um, it's very catchy, very danceable, um, and if you notice in the chorus, I don't know if you notice this either, um, she goes sex, 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 which kind of sounds like six, six, six. <laughs> Anthony! <laughs> <laughs> wait. <laughs> oh, you missed it. Oh, Come wait, back. okay, wait. <laughs> oh! Whoa! <laughs> There's so many small details on this album that really make it better. Yo, I love that. <laughs> I really, really, really like that. It's just so oh. catchy and like makes me want to dance yeah. on a Halloween club. <laughs> dance on the floor at the Halloween club. Break it down <laughs> on Halloween. Um, yeah. Gonna... And then it ends in kind of like a haunting choir kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then it has distorted vocals in the outro and it's very creepy. All together, I just love this song. I don't know. Makes you want to rattle them bones on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's probably not appropriate. Okay. Anyway, I li I listened to I listened to the song twice. I listened to it once for like the first um like listen, second to write my notes down, and then again I listened to it again on my way here in the car. Loved it all three times. Um, that being said, I, the whole thought of the song, like, shook me. <laughs> so here is a list of some famous people who have died while in the act of copulation. <laughs> <laughs> Attila <laughs> died in March 453. Um, supposed to have died in the process of celebrating his wedding night with his new bride, but then it says that he died of a nosebleed. <laughs> 
Pope Leo VIII died on the 1st of March, 965, of a stroke while in the process of adultery. <laughs> Pope John the Twelfth died on the 14th of May, 964. One story relates that he died of paralytic stroke, suffering while in the act of copulation with a woman named Stefanata. <laughs> he may have died instead when the woman's husband, now get this, defenestrated John or beat him to death with a hammer during the act. Defenestrate means to throw out of a window. <coughs> so this dude, Pope John, was a, being freaky with <laughs> Stefanetta. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of like famous people. Lord Palmerston, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, died in 1865 following a brief illness. Sources disagree about the immediate circumstance of his death. It is rumored that while in copulate, copulating with the maid on a billiard table precipitated his demise. Um, but this is disputed because other sources state that he died of pneumonia. A little less uh, flashy. Um, <laughs> Cardinal John Jean Daniel Liu. Um, he died inside a Paris brothel at 69 years of age. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, okay, this one, <laughs> all of us Americans can enjoy this. Nelson Rockefeller, former vice president of the United States and heir to the Rockefeller family fortune, died in 1979 of a heart attack at age 70 rumored to have been caused by having intercourse with his secretary. <laughs> Yay, America. Yeah, America. Also, apparently, Matthew McConaughey's dad <laughs> died of a heart attack while having intercourse oh with his God. wife, Kim. <laughs> Thank you, Wikipedia, for bringing Thank us a list you, of Wikipedia. people that died through Okay, I'm not going to actually state this one, but Anthony, if you <laughs> okay. <laughs> for viewers at home, for listeners at home, <laughs> I just read a very disturbing Wikipedia book. <laughs> We're going to move on because... We spent too long on this. <laughs> so, Ooh. anyway, that's the end of volume... No, that's the end of volume two until the last song. Yeah. So let's move on to volume one. Yeah. Omen. Omen. <laughs> gonna be mature now yeah yeah of course okay this was a good monster movie instrumental uh, my favorite part was kim's vocals and then the building of the instrumental like through the song yeah that's exactly what i wrote i like how yeah. it became overlaid with her vocals and then it builds up at the beginning i didn't really like it but then i liked it as it went on and that's all i have to say about that one mm -hmm. so let's move on to close your eyes to me this is not necessarily my favorite on the album, but it's the most, it's like the epitome of Halloween pop to me. Mm -hmm. Like it just screams Halloween pop. It's one of the more substantial songs on the album. And it sounds very much like the type of song you'd hear in Lady Gaga fame monster yeah, era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is definitely a vibe I got from this album. I love that too. And I can also imagine just like walking through a Halloween store and being like, close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. I'm like, sir. <laughs> Ma'am, this is a Halloween <laughs> store. This is a McDonald's drive through <laughs> Yeah. To me, it's like the big single of the album. Um, and I like the instrumental bridge and the way it builds up mm -hmm. into the final chorus. Yeah. That's all I have to say about that one. Not my favorite, but I like it. <laughs> I can't tell if this was one of my favorites or not, but judging by my notes, I did. Okay. This, these are my notes word for word. Love the build up to the song and the muffled effect. Oh my god, it feels like I'm in the closet during an 80s teen party before everybody gets murdered. It's great. <laughs> the voice sound effects really were great at the end. So I liked it. Yeah. yeah. It's a good one. Really nice. Um, and then it ends with footsteps, which leads into the next instrumental track, which is Transylvania. Transylvania. I love that title. Yeah. It's my favorite title on the album. I felt like listening to it, like, it was like kind of a typical, like, club beat. I think there was some, because I think I read about the album, how there was, there's been an intersection of, kind of, not kind of, intersection of LGBT themes mm -hmm. and horror. Yeah. I don't know if you 
Have you read up on that? Yeah, I read it on I did a few tracks. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it definitely becomes obvious on this track because, mm-hmm. I mean, the title, obviously. Yeah. Because I, I do know when I was reading about it, like, um, if you look, Bram Stoker, who wrote Dracula, there <laughs> was, I think it said, like, a bunch of horror writers were, like, gay. I know um, there was, a like, a, a lesbian vampire novel named Carmilla that did have LGBT themes, obviously. Um, but I think, yeah. I think it's one thing that makes this album deeper than you would expect it mm-hmm. to be. Because the, if you think about it, and I, we'll definitely get to this in the last track because I think it's the most overtly obvious there. Yeah. Um, but I feel like this song, or this whole album, is about being different and being perceived as scary, but then coming to celebrate your differences at the end. Mm-hmm. And... It really becomes obvious on Transylvania, even though it's an instrumental song, just by the name of the track. Um, to me, this is actually my favorite instrumental on the album, because it's got a good beat. Um, yeah. Continuing from the previous song, it's kind of like walking into a Halloween party, is the vibe I got. Um, and then it breaks halfway through, and it changes to like this melodic, electronic synthesizer melody. Mm-hmm. And it's like an electric guitar solo, and yeah. I love it so much. Um, yeah. I like this one a lot. It is good. Let's move on to Turn Off the Light, the title track, featuring Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Anthony, do you know who um, Elvira is? I actually do not. Would you like to educate me? Okay, for those of you that don't know, for those of you who weren't little weirdos like me (laughs) when I was younger, actually, Elvira was one of those, like, ladies, like, she would, you know, she's titled one of the like horror princesses mm-hmm. or whatever princess queen of horror i think or queen of the night because she would do some of those variety shows not variety but um those movie marathons of horror movies and she would like kind of act as a host to them um anyway but she came out with the movie i think in the 80s and for some reason like that was like my movie for like <laughs> <laughs> like a solid like two weeks <laughs> All I watched was that movie. I don't know why. I think this is when, like, literally my time was just, how old was I? Like, 13? <laughs> All I would do was watch, like, Netflix movies, and somehow I I was, like, on the weird side of YouTube or something. I just found that movie, and I watched it. But anyway, for those of you that don't know Elvira, I guess look her up so you know who she is. But, yeah, she's... You know, she's one of those uh, horror, like, pulp icons. Yeah, and I did like her part on this song because it Mm -hmm. definitely added to the horror vibes. Mm -hmm. To me, her verse, which is in the bridge, reminded me of the the guy who did the voice in Thriller. Like, that little spoken part in Thriller. I think, I feel like this was a callback to that. Yeah. Um, But as for the rest of the song, I really liked it. I like the chorus, it's very melodic, and obviously, since this is the title track, it encapsulates the whole album. Mm-hmm. And then the instrumental is very smooth and clean, mm-hmm. and I liked it. <clears throat> yeah, I have to say, the melody and the synth in the background, part of my French, sexy. <laughs> it was great, I loved it. Uh, I, I don't know why, but going into this album, I didn't expect it to be like very seductive or or everything but now that I'm thinking about even the title turn off the lights like yeah like why would would this album be anything else yeah so it's very much a novelty like kind of um campy kind of album yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. and I really I I don't know I'm a sucker for camp I do yeah I love when artists do camp and people hate on them but then I'm like y'all have a little fun uneducated uncultured (laughs) schwein why (laughs) This album, it should be appreciated, honestly. Yeah. It really should. And then we did mention before how it's, like, LGBT Mm -hmm. topic-centered. Elvira's spoken part, let me pull up the lyrics, but... um, Oh, I was reading about that. They were very... Very heavy. um, Yeah, you could definitely get LGBT references from it. Um, And my Google's being a little annoying. So I'm pulling up the lyrics. Um, no, I'm not. Apparently, there's like 8,000 okay, songs called Turn Off the Light, which I'm not a fan of. That. But yeah, 
Um, only in the darkness will you try- find your true self. Ooh. Howl at the moon to awaken the spell. One cannot judge what the eye cannot see. Outside the realm of humanity, embrace your fear. Don't dare to run. Only then will you be what you're meant to become. That's like the whole album to me. Like that speaks about like loving yourself, mm-hmm. and being who you are, even when everyone else thinks you're scary. Dang, Anthony! Oh my god, I'm gonna start crying. No, but I do like um the line "Only in the darkness will you find your true self." It reminds me. I now I can't remember the song for the life of me, but if you um the 1975 Maddie Healy has this one specific line. It all tastes the same in the dark. Like, because he has mentioned before, I think he is, I don't he is LGBT, I'm, I don't, but anyway, I don't know, it just reminded me of that, like, It another, definitely has that Cynthia 1975 yeah. feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it. Next song is track number 13, ooh. ooh. Um, Tell Me It's a Nightmare. What were your thoughts on this one? <clears throat> I liked it. Um, I think my favorite part was that um, her la la la. Me too. At the I very that. end, um, and the instrumental, it was really good. Um, I did get a very specific vibe from it. <clears throat> like it sounded like a soundtrack you'd hear when the main protagonist, like the teen protagonist of the movie, entered an abandoned mall full of zombies. Like I don't know why. Then I just got those vibes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, very specific. Very specific imagery from this album, but. That's what I got. Yeah, I like the chorus of this one. It's very Halloween-y. Mm-hmm. Um, and to me, it reminds me of Wrong Turn, back from the beginning of the album. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. they're both kind of hypnotic in a way. They're very much like, da, 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 mm-hmm. like kind of <laughs> over and over. But I really like it. And altogether, this song is about like the consequences of everything that the album has led up to. Mm-hmm. Um, where her lover finally pays the price for wanting her. That kind of sad. Depressing. Yeah, just a little bit. Just but a it's a good bit. song. Yeah. I think it's the longest on the album, too. Um, but yeah, not much else to say. Yeah. Track number 14, I Don't Want to Die, Instrumental. Okay. I'm glad that it, like, it was the repeated verse, I don't want to die, I want to live. And then I think when you hear the instrumental in the background with the added effects, plus the addition of Kim's vocals, it makes it a good song. I think, yeah, I think it's not a bad song. It's mm-hmm. just, like, because I don't think there's actually really any bad songs on this album. Yeah. It's just, to me, it felt like kind of a retread of some of the instrumentals that were before. Like, it didn't really offer anything new. At least that's what I got from it. Yeah. That could be different, but I feel like the beat drop itself was very repetitive from all the other instrumentals. And not much else I have to say about it. Track 15, In the Next Life. I like In the Next Life a lot. I think it's it's my favorite. It's one of my favorites, yeah. definitely. Um, my favorite line <laughs> is, cut you open for entertainment. Okay, and whoa, when she starts singing in German. <laughs> I was shook. Also, I feel like I've heard this melody before. Like, I'm pretty sure I have. But, my favorite. Yeah. All around my favorite. Um, This is the part of the album, and I don't know if this is strange, but on this song and the last song, I got Prince, I'm um, not Prince, Queen vibes. Mm-hmm. Um, Kind of based on Bohemian Rhapsody, I feel like, just because the lyrics, like, first time in my life, I'm not afraid, first time I remember feeling anything, there's no turning back now, I can't be saved, and in the next life they'll remember me. I don't know why I got Bohemian Rhapsody vibes from it, but it felt like very much like someone who's trying to help you, but you're like, I'm a lost cause, bye, kind of vibes. Almost like like a duality and in yourself. Yeah, and it's very theatrical, which I think is yeah. what gave me the Queen vibes. Very killer lady. Yeah, and this I is, think is yeah. Feminine horror. Oh, <coughs> oh my God! Here we go again. I'm in love. <laughs> I love. Why haven't I? Why haven't I mentioned that until now? Feminine horror, yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Kim Petras. Listen. What you did. <laughs> it's iconic. 
Honestly, though, this whole album is iconic. It really is. Like, who else is making a Halloween album? Nobody. 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 And why not? We need some spooky music. I know. You have all these people doing all these, like, Christmas, Christmas <laughs> albums. like. And it's the same songs over and over. I'm gonna, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm thinking about what I was about to say, maybe I shouldn't. But I'll tell you later. No, say it now. <laughs> I'll jiggle my way until your heart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't seem right for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> Moving on. But anyway, this song is about her going off to her death. Mm-hmm. Metaphorically. Yeah. Hopefully not literally. Yeah. Um, but then it has like this really hollow, sick beat in the verses. And then that's where you get the German in the second verse. Yes. And then the chorus kind of contrasts it because it's really melodic and beautiful. Mm-hmm. And the backing vocals are so good. I really like this song. Really a lot. good, yeah. I bop to it. Let's move on. Track 16 Boo Beach. <laughs> it's an instrumental track. Mm-hmm. Not one of my favorites. My bottom track of the album. Yeah. I, I, it, I feel like there was nothing really stand out about it. It's the same exact problem I have with I Don't Want to Die. Yeah. Like, it feels like the same thing that's already happened. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a shame because it has, like, one of the coolest names on the album. And then it just didn't really do anything. I think that's why I wish there kind of was. I don't know what you would do for, like, lyric-wise. I don't know. It depends on the, like direction you're trying to take it but i kind of wish there was like lyrics yeah i feel like with a song with this title you could have gone really yeah you could you really could have like boo beach i know get out the way oh my (laughs) god (laughs) i will say one of the things i did like about this song was something i've mentioned earlier the woo ah tagline Mm. Um, the, it's through several songs on this album. This time, it's like a demonic voice in the background that just goes, Wah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> I like that. How's your throat? My throat's kind of bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I bet. And with that, let's move on to the last track of the album. Mm. Everybody Dies. I'm you scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Or do scrolling, you want me to scrolling. start? Where is it? <clears throat> Did I not write notes for it? <gasps> Penelope. I thought I had it, all of them. Apparently I didn't. No, this is what happens when you listen to it on shuffle. <laughs> you don't get everything. We're going to pause this episode <gasps> right now. Oh my god. La- is it your favorite la- track? Yes, it's oh. my <laughs> And make Penelope <laughs> listen to it. Okay, we'll be okay, right okay. back. Okay, we're back. All right. <laughs> Penelope has listened to this song. Okay. Thank God, because yeah. it's no, my I, favorite on the album. I did. I I guess I just didn't. No, maybe it was one of the ones. <laughs> <laughs> I think Demons, Devil Will Be Blood, and then this song just kind of all fused together. Oh but God. before I knew my it, heart. I was kind of like, what song am I on? <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'll go first, because you clearly love this song, so you'll probably, uh, uh, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) Okay, what you just heard was one little snippet of Brandon Urie's Hallelujah. It gives me, like, really big panic at the disco, like, Mm -hmm. um, Pray for the Wicked and, Mm -hmm. uh, what was it, Death of a Bachelor vibes? That and Queen, and kind of that whole theatrical and dramatic on lyric genes it did say that this was more triumphant sounding Mm -hmm. in terms of instrumental and i do like really see that um i like it i think my favorite lyric if genius will load is um the pre-chorus so i'm gonna rebel until the end and when i go down i'm gonna see you in hell you can't scare me i'm prepared so give me all my roses while i'm here Kind of like, don't, panic vibe. Yeah. Don't mourn me. Mm-hmm. Like, just give me all, like, my roses right now. Yeah. Because I think it said this thing about there being an evil Kim and then the regular Kim. 
and the evil king was like, mm-hmm. I don't regret any of the like bad stuff I did. Hell no. Oh. <laughs> and then now, I don't know. I really do. Like, it's almost like a Jekyll and Mr. Hyde sort of thing going on mm-hmm. with this evil Kim. So that everybody dies, I think, is like her saying, like, I don't really care. <clears throat> yeah. And to me, that's what makes it a great close to the album. Because it's like the opposite of character development Mm -hmm. to where it's like everyone's been telling you you need to grow but then you realize by the end that you're actually fine the way you are Mm -hmm. um and i i just like it because it's so triumphant and it's like a like at the end of a musical the like the closing number that you would hear um it's just like embracing death as inevitable and something that everyone experiences and it's very storytelling, kind of, which is why I got Queen vibes from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's definitely my favorite song on the album. I just love it so much. Um, and especially with the vocals and the harmonies and, and the backing melodies, once you get to the second chorus, it's just insane. Like, it's so full sounding. And I don't know, I just love it. Like, I think my favorite part of the song is the second verse. Um, not only because this is the part where all the high melodies come in, but also the lyrics are super, like, reflective. Um, She says, So scatter all my ashes in the sea. Promise me that you'll remember me. Never was who I was supposed to be, but I never gave apologies. Where I weigh these, where I lay these Lenciagas is my home. I'm a rolling stone. It's very nostalgic to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Tell me why this Halloween song is making me emotional. (laughs) But yeah, it's just, it's a nice way to end the album. It also gives me Lady Gaga speechless vibes, which is from her Fame Monster album as well. So I don't know. Very nice way to wrap up the album. And interestingly, this is the last song in Volume 2, so it was separated from all the other Volume 2 songs. So it was like Volume 2, then Volume 1, and then the last song in Volume 2. And that's how the album goes. Mm. Which I thought was very fitting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now it's time for our final thoughts final on the thoughts, album. Final thoughts. You go first. Okay. I do... I think this is... Honestly, it's perfect. Mm-hmm. It is a It is a great album. That's the thing. Is I don't know how I'm going to rate it. Because I feel like this is good in a certain context. Yeah. Exactly. It is a Halloween October album. So there aren't many songs on it that I'm going to add to like my regular listening mm-hmm. playlist just because they give me that specific vibes. I will say, however, um, it was great. Yeah. It was great. It fit the theme that I was aiming for. It gave you very specific and wonderful imagery. The production was amazing. The lyrics, they weren't anything like spectacular, but they didn't have to be. Mm-hmm. And that's what I liked about it. Yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to say about the album too. Um, going off of that, it's definitely a year, like a one month kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like I'm definitely not going to listen to it the rest of the year, but I think it's super good and it's a great Halloween spirit kind of album. Um, what I'll say about this album is, I think it's everything on it is good, but the downside is there aren't a lot of great moments, and mm-hmm. I think like. There's some great moments, and I'll get to that when we talk about our favorite songs. But other than that, I think everything is just good. And I think if you want to have a perfect album, which is why I'm not going to give it a perfect score, you have to have a lot of greats. But overall, it's a very good album. Mm -hmm. So let's get into our top favorites and then ranking or rating it. All right. This is in no particular order, but I'm going to do my top five. Number one, Massacre. Mm -hmm. Number two... Wrong Turn, number three, In the Next Life, number four, Turn Off the Lights, and then number five, I would say, is either Death by Sex or Tell Me It's a Nightmare. And then what are your bottom whatever? My bottom, uh, Boo Beach, <laughs> Knives, um, oh, I'll, I'll say Demons, and then... I don't know. I don't. That's the thing. Yeah. It's, they're not even. They're not. They're not bad. Yeah. Like it, they're all good, but 
honestly, no, I'll just have my top five and then everything else will be just <laughs> kind of there. Yeah. But um, then I will say knives, I think will be at the very bottom just because that, that <laughs> made me cringe so hard. Um, okay, I'll do my top three, mm-hmm. which is Everybody Dies by Far, mm-hmm. um, and then Death by Sex and In the Next Life, I really like. And then I also put my favorite instrumental, which was Transylvania and Knives. Yeah, that was right. And then my bottom three is Boo Beach, mm-hmm. Bloody Valentine, Yeah, I Don't Want to Die, and then the worst like actual song that's not instrumental, um, I put There Will Be Blood. And I would rate this album a four out of five. Uh, <laughs> in the context of Halloween, I don't know. It is in the context those, of Halloween, five out of like, five. Like yeah, classic. I think that's the thing is you're not gonna watch um, Nightmare Before Christmas any other time besides October. Yeah. So I think as just an album itself, I think I'm gonna do a three point five out of five. Halloween album, five. Yeah. I think that's the exact rating I would give it to. 3.5 yeah. out of five. And then five for Halloween. Mm-hmm. Gucci. Great. Thanks, guys, for listening. Thanks I for hope listening. you enjoyed. We're still not done with our spooky episodes because there's Mm-mm. two more weeks left in Halloween, so stay tuned. Next week, we have an exciting episode about ghost towns and yes, spooky stories and all things scary. And Blue the- Beach. <laughs> And then the week after that will be the dark side of pain. Yes. So Because that in itself is spooky. Yeah. So thanks, guys, for listening. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.